Embrace Neonatal MRI System, a transformative solution for neuroimaging inside the NICU. First, let's start with some of the things we know about MR, its strengths and its challenges. Its strengths certainly are providing the best anatomical delineation of brain structure and injury. And it offers multiple complementary sequences which further enhance the ability to properly identify and diagnose pathologies within the anatomical structure. The challenges of traditional MR are also just as commonly understood. It requires coordination with a radiology schedule that is always full. It can disrupt radiology throughput goals when you bring a very fragile patient into the schedule. It requires transporting the patient from their clinical department to the radiology department to a point of delivery rather than a point of care. It requires the patient to lie still, sometimes for several minutes at a time. All of these challenges leading to a more difficult process for acquiring information so critical to diagnosis. But now let's talk about the challenges of traditional NICU MRI process, which is even more complex. Those fall into three buckets, patient safety risk, workflow complexities, and financial inefficiencies. Starting with patient safety risk, we know the patient infection risk is greater when you expose a NICU patient to the entire hospital when transporting them to the radiology department. We know that there is greater hypothermia risk, not only during the transport process, but also during the scanning process. There's a greater patient safety risk simply by being unable to scan some patients because they are too unstable to withstand the transport to the radiology department. And then during the scan itself, we add increased patient safety risk simply by using sedation, which is sometimes required to achieve good scans on a baby that simply will not lie still. The workflow complexities are also very well understood and increasingly frustrating to the NICU. The lengthy nursing staff preparation that's required, not only just to transport a baby to the radiology department, but also in preparation for bringing equipment into a magnetic, ferromagnetic attraction environment that is the case around an MRI system in a traditional radiology department. It's a labor intensive transport. You are not simply pushing one bed, you're pushing an incubator, you're pushing all of the additional ancillary equipment that that patient requires, infusion pumps, respiratory support, Everything that's used at the bedside has to basically be pushed through the hospital to the radiology department. And then the MRI scheduling limitations that can result in greater strain on NICU staffing. And what we mean by that is that the radiology department, because the schedule is very, very tight and runs on a very tight demand for patient throughput, may result in inpatient scans, like NICU scans, being done at night, being done at times when NICU staff and support staff may not be as great as they are at other times during the day. And then finally, the financial inefficiencies that are a traditional challenge in the NICU when looking at using MRI. The lengthy process ties up MRI, which decreases radiology throughput and can result in lower revenue for the radiology department. The needless waste of medications, simply because lines have to be extended on those infusion pumps. An IV infusion pump cannot sit in the room with a traditional MRI scanner and must be placed outside the room requiring those lengthy um, IV line extensions. The medication that's wasted running it to get to the right titration in those uh, very lengthy lines is a loss of cost. And then the staffing burden to move a single patient. We try to be very efficient with our staff, 
But when you move a baby out of the NICU to the radiology department, you are taking two, three, sometimes four members of the team out of the NICU and dedicating them solely to a single patient for as long as it takes to get to the radiology department, through the scan, and back to the NICU. The traditional approach is very common in NICUs around the world. It's a complex and time-consuming process requiring transporting fragile babies out of the NICU to the radiology department. The extensive planning, preparation, and coordination that's required requires an hours-long process to complete. It puts the neonate at increased risk of infection and places added stress on the parents, their baby's gone from the NICU for an extended period of time, certainly puts added stress on the NICU staff, both in the preparation and in the time they have their baby off of the unit. And it also puts increased risk of infection and added stress on the baby themselves being pulled from an environment that has been designed specifically for their needs and moving them through a very bright, sometimes very noisy transport throughout the hospital to a department that is again lit and staffed to manage multiple patients, both outpatient and inpatient throughout the hospital. But what if there was a transformative approach to neonatal MRI? A, a process that keeps both your patient and a simplified, much, much simplified workflow inside your NICU. From the bedside, applying MRI, ECG, and SpO2 leads, feeding and swaddling the baby, rolling them right into the embrace suite within your NICU, and then returning them just as quickly back to the bedside all can be accomplished in under an hour. The comparison is amazing. Looking at a traditional approach to neonatal MRI on the left-hand side, I know you can't see this here, but it is available on our website, but it's a multi-step, multi-hour process to accomplish an MRI scan of a neonate using the traditional method, or it's a very quick, um, patient-friendly, staff-friendly process that stays within the NICU. The question is quite simple. Which would you choose? Which would your staff choose? Which would your parents choose for their baby? And then most importantly, which approach would your babies choose for themselves if they could choose? The Embrace Neonatal MRI system is the choice that a baby would make. So let's look at it a little more closely. There are several things I would like to point out. First and foremost, it's a very small system. When we suggest taking MRI into the NICU, we recognize that the environment is not a very open space with a lot of unused area. It's a critical care, intensive care space. This is a system that has been designed from the ground up, from concept to completion, has been designed specifically for use in the NICU and specifically for the needs of the NICU patient. So it is a very small footprint. It's approximately 1.4 meters by 1.7 meters in its size. The room that it requires completely is just over a four by five meter room. That is for everything. And we'll look at that a little more closely in just a moment. So moving on to number two and talking about the system itself, it is a permanent one Tesla magnet with a full self-shielded design. That's a very important component to the embrace because it is fully self-shielded. It doesn't require a shielded room. It doesn't require the expense of shielding the entire room, all war, walls, floor, and ceiling. It doesn't require cryogens. So it means it doesn't have to have that mechanical infrastructure to manage those cryogens, piping them to the system, and then very importantly, having the ability to vent them out of the system when needed. That requirement doesn't exist with the Embrace. It also has no special power requirements. We know a traditional MRI system must 
always be powered. It is always running. So you have to install additional backup power supply to ensure that traditional system never runs out of power. That is not the case with the Embrace. You actually turn this system off when you are not scanning. And we'll talk about that a little bit in just a moment. As I said, no ferromagnetic considerations. So not only does that mean you don't have to shield the room, it means also that you don't have to be um, concerned about the equipment and the accessories that come into the room with the staff. As I said, it is completely an on-off um, design. You turn the system off when you're not scanning, which means when it is not scanning, it is completely silent. And then when it is being used for scans, because we've designed it for the NICU and for the NICU patient, it is 40% quieter. And I'll show you some detail on that in just a moment. It does offer very simple integration into existing EMR and PACS systems so that the information does flow quite seamlessly to the radiologist for reading, just as you see with traditional MR scanners. Now, moving on to some very specific elements that have designed when considering the patients that we are scanning. Number three that you see at the top of the embrace is a video display. The system offers continuous video monitoring of the baby. No longer does the nursing team have to wonder how the baby is doing because they are so far inside a large adult size magnet. Now with the embrace, you have a video system that, that activates the moment the patient bed is docked. That gives a visual monitoring capability of the baby's face, looking at the respiratory system, if that's in place. And if parents are in the room, they can watch their baby and feel confident that their baby is comfortable and is not disturbed by the scanning procedure. Because the room is um, basically a zone one room, which means anyone can enter the room without screening, it does make it easier to allow parents to accompany their baby, thereby limiting their anxiety and reducing that anxiety during the scan. And then finally, number four that you see here on the screen is the patient bed. As I said, this is a system that was designed specifically for neonates. So the patient's handling system, the bed, the platform where the patient will be placed is actually designed for neonates as a thermally controlled environment. You set the temperature to the baby's needs, just as you set a temperature on an incubator or warmer. So you're able to scan those babies that are younger than term equivalent and provide that thermal continuity that is so critical to their development. Not only is the bed providing thermal support, but the magnet itself, because of its design, does not require any air movement in the system. So you don't have a cold baby. No longer will you have a hypothermic baby returning to the NICU after a scan. These are very important elements to the design of the Embrace. But let's look at how the Embrace looks within a clinical environment. This is a working magnet. This is in a working NICU in a large tertiary care hospital. You can actually see if you look on the far right, we're looking across the hallway into another patient room. And that's important to note because that speaks to several things. That speaks to the fact that the NICU is able to accommodate the embrace very easily within the working patient care space. You'll see that the room has normal patient privacy doors. You don't require extra heavy doors to shield the sound from the rest of the NICU. And then if you look at the embrace itself, you'll notice some things that never happen on a traditional magnet. In the upper left corner in front of the embrace, that's a traditional infusion pump being placed right at the entrance to the magnet. So you don't have to worry about those IV extension lines. You can see that's a traditional incubator. That's actually a GE Giraffe Omnibed that's been brought right into the room. Remember, this is a working magnet. We're in a hospital looking at this embrace. You see in the front of the magnet, to the right, 
those are traditional oxygen and air tanks being brought right into the room for support of that baby. So if the baby transports in on respiratory support, you can bring them in with a traditional ventilator with traditional air and O2 tanks to support that baby. And then if you look at the top of the screen, that is the image that you see of the baby during a scan. You're looking at the nose and mouth of the baby to ensure that the respiratory system is still being properly supported and respiratory equipment has not moved in any way. And you're also able to simply monitor the baby. Are they starting to move? Are they comfortable? Is there any reason that you would need to pull the baby out and address a problem with the baby? This is a level of visual monitoring that has never been available to the NICU team that brings babies into radiology for a scan. Everything you see here is traditional equipment. Traditional equipment being brought in right with the baby without leaving the NICU. It's simply transported down the hall within the NICU and into the room for the scan. So to be a little more specific about the system itself, there are four primary components to an Embrace system. Number one that you see on the screen is the electronics cabinet. I talked about the lack of requirement for backup power and heavy mechanical infrastructure. This is the full electronics cabinet for the Embrace. So it does not require mechanical room to house that. It can actually be housed within the room with the system if need be. Number two is the magnet itself that we've talked about extensively. Number three is that patient bed. We'll look at that a little more closely in just a moment. And then number four is the workstation. Now this is just a representative uh, photo to show you the components of the workstation. Certainly your technologist would like a little more table space for their work area. But the important things to note here is that it's just screens, and a computer CPU unit at the bottom on the floor. And you see the small box with a green light and a red light. Those are the on off buttons. Remember, I mentioned that this system is turned off when you're not scanning. Now to talk specifically about the needs of the baby, it starts with controlling the baby's environment. You're doing that in your NICUs every day. You're controlling the temperature, you're controlling the stimulus that the baby receives. We have done the same with a unique custom designed patient bed based on the temperature needs that smaller babies require in the NICU. This is equipped with temperature setting capability. It's an air temperature controlled environment. It's also designed to give you immediate access to the baby when needed with two large lucite doors that open on both sides of the bed. You can see here in this photo on the left, the door is open on one side. The nurse is actually routing the respiratory circuits through the channel there at the end of the bed. Those are the cable management systems that allow you to run IV lines, respiratory support, all of the necessary equipment out of the bed and out of the magnet to safely continue their use during a scan. And then the doors are closed. As you can see, even with the doors fully closed, you keep full visibility of the baby while you are prepping to um, move the baby into the magnet. And then when the baby is moved into the magnet, as I showed you a moment ago, you immediately get that visual monitoring of the baby. So we've controlled the baby's environment in an appropriate way for their development. And then we also help in the management of the macro environment within the NICU when we look at the sound profile. As I told you earlier, the Embrace has been designed for the NICU not only in its physical design, but also in its performance and in its sound profile. In blue, you see traditional magnet sound levels in the room it's not unusual for the sound within the room to reach 110 decibels. That's a very loud environment. With our system, even during scanning, when sound is being generated, we don't exceed 67 decibels of sound. So with a door closed, there is no disturbance of the rest of the NICU by the embrace. And then let's talk very specifically about what the baby is experiencing. 
So some scanners in radiology can actually reach levels up to 125 decibels of sound being experienced inside the magnet. There are not enough earplugs or earmuffs to dampen that down to a safer, more appropriate sound level for a NICU baby. But with the embrace, we're very nicely structured to only reach 85 decibels during the loudest scan. So we continue to utilize and we recommend our customers utilize those traditional sound abatement tools using inner ear plugs, using the outer ear muffs. Those things will help mitigate the sound and bring the sound level down into a very appropriate level for the baby throughout the scans. That is what we have designed for use in the NICU. And I'd like to take a moment and share just one case with you. We'll talk about the sequences that are available, and then we'll review one case to give you an example of how the embrace is changing critical decision-making in the NICU. So first of all, the sequences that are available on the embrace. These are the traditional sequences that are used day in and day out when ordering a neuroscan of a NICU baby. T1 weighted spin echo, T2 weighted fast spin echo, diffusion weighted imaging with ADC mapping, and gradient echo 2D and 3D. We have several things in uh, our work in progress stage right now, a 3D fast spin echo. And then just recently, we have moved our susceptibility weighted imaging with magnetization prepared 3D FSE into clinical practice. It is now in beta um, review in two hospitals. We'll go into the third shortly. And we are seeing phenomenal results with SWI being able to visualize hemorrhaging very, very nicely, even small punctate um, hemorrhages you're able to see very nicely. And then our roadmap continues to expand with input from our clinical partners. We continue to build our roadmap to add to the capabilities of the embrace. So how MR is used in the NICU? I'm sure this is familiar to all of you, but just to keep us all on the same page. In term infants, you're using it to define the extent and presence of brain injury. You're looking at that HIE to both diagnose and, and assess the correct therapy. The timing and nature of the injury is critical to this step. You're using it in term infants to, act, to provide access for the sickest infants. Those term babies that are so critically ill that continuation of care decisions have to be made. And in some cases, they're being made without the ability to visualize completely the neural status of that baby. Using it for biomarkers for outcome. Now in the preterm infants, we're using MRI to identify brain injury, monitoring maturation and growth. And with the embrace in the NICU, you're able to truly track that growth because you can more easily do sequential scanning. It doesn't involve that complex planning and prepping process and does not require requesting yet another slot or two slots on the radiology schedule. In preterm infants, MR is used to assess the nature and severity of acute brain injury. Directing those clinical decisions, both in the NICU, the decisions to initiate therapy sooner, and then also is used um, in discharge risk for stratification of rehabilitation, determining what post-NICU therapeutic interventions are required for that baby and making sure those things are being lined up before the baby leaves your care in the NICU. We know that all infants benefit from the delineation of brain injury and it impacts NICU care, which is a benefit to all babies in your NICUs. Embrace offers easy access, safe and high quality imaging without leaving the NICU. The, the images you see on the right are some of the representative images from the Embrace. This is not a triage screening tool. 
This is a diagnostic imaging device. It provides full clinical diagnostic value in the images that are achieved. Recommendations, you're probably familiar with this um, and the reference is there on the slide for you, but imaging rec recommendations are, are fairly well known. Head ultrasound is useful to detect major malformations in hemorrhages, but we have real world examples on a regular basis where ultrasound misses even some of those major malformations or major tumor presence. CT shouldn't be used due to both poor sensitivity and probably even more importantly, due to the risk of radiation exposure, cumulative exposure over time. In terms of MRI, the imaging recommendations are that MRI be done on day one through four as a useful tool for delineating injury on diffusion and is helpful for estimating the timing of injury. That's when we're talking about HIE in those term babies. And then follow-up imaging between day seven and 21, preferably around day 10, that is a useful tool to show injury on conventional imaging, um, looking at 15% false negative in, um, in the babies. I'd like to take a moment and share with you one example. I'm sure each of you can think of a baby that was too sick, too fragile, to be taken out of the NICU and transported to radiology for an MRI. But the information that you were missing was a, a critical gap in the understanding of that patient's full status. This is a case study out of one of our sites, 41 week, three day neonate born uh, via C-section for acute placental abruption. APGARs were very, very low on this baby. I'm not gonna read the whole slide to you, but you certainly can read through it yourself. Baby was intubated at four minutes of life. They started passive cooling at five minutes of life. This baby was on a very difficult course. Seizures developed in the first 24 hours. They did a head ultrasound at day one, which was normal. Head ultrasound day two raised questions of edema. And then because of this baby's status, at the time the embrace was only being used under IRB control, but through a compassionate use case, they scanned this baby to understand what exactly was going on. This is the baby. This is the baby. You can see all of the support equipment that was required for this baby at the time. There is no way anyone could have transported this baby safely and confidently out of the NICU and to the radiology department. There was no way to maintain all of this support for the baby to get a scan. Baby was on uh, receiving hypothermic therapy, was on an oscillator, was on nitric oxide and eight infusion lines. This would have taken a crew of several, several, several people to even attempt to leave the NICU with the baby being an incredible risk to do so. This is what the MRI shows. On the top, the images across the screen are the Embrace MRI. They didn't see anything significant. They repeated it on day five once they started to recognize that maybe the baby could withstand the trip based on having seen the images from the, the Embrace. There was almost a question of whether the Embrace had really picked anything up so they did it on a traditional three Tesla magnet and again, saw nothing of great concern. It was just predominantly frontal white matter injury that was um, confirmed after cooling. Embrace images at the top of the screen, three Tesla magnet images at the bottom of the screen. Again, just that predominant frontal white matter injury that they did confirm after cooling. So prior to obtaining the embrace images, when everything looked very, very um, distraught with this ca patient's care, everything pointed toward a difficult decision about discontinuation of care 
It was being considered, the conversation was being considered with the family. But after having the MRI there in the NICU, the family was reassured and the team was reassured that brain injury was not devastating and intensive care should continue. They went from a very tragic decision that may have been made to discontinue care to quite easily with minimal risk to the patient, confirming that there was no devastating brain injury. There was some mild white matter injury and volume loss confirmed at three and a half months. And there is developmental follow-up that's pending for this baby. But this is the most important story. She's now a little bit older than this now, but she has normal development. Having an MRI in the NICU makes the critical information necessary to make clinical care decisions accessible, safer for patients, more efficient from a workflow staff perspective, and provides a level of comfort to families that cannot be achieved by taking the baby out of the NICU. The Embrace neonatal MRI system is a transformative approach to neonatal MRI. Very quickly, I'm going to leave you with this slide to give you the actual physical specifications on the system. It is a fixed permanent magnet. It is a one Tesla system. The system weighs 5,500 kilograms. It has a patient accessible bore size that you see there on the screen. What that actually means is that we can scan babies up to 4.5 kilos and a head circumference up to 38 centimeters. It has a zero external magnetic field. As I explained, that allows you to bring traditional equipment right into the room, right to the magnet. The five gauss line is confined within the system. And then you see the dimensions there again. This is the way MRI can be done best for baby, best for staff, best for families. Thank you.